Hello everyone, I am Althea Walters, your host for this evening, and I want to welcome you to Focus and Fulfilled. And today I have on this show Brendan from Master Talk, and Brendan is the founder of Master Talk, a YouTube channel he started to help the world master the art of public speaking and communication. He coaches purpose-driven entrepreneurs on how to master their message and share their ideas with the world. In these sessions, pers persons will be able to talk to any executives with a high level of confidence, speaking in a way that gets people excited to follow you, communicating better on the phone than in, in person, and how to make, make complex messages simple. That is how to make things really sharp and clear so people happy that you could join us today how are you very good althea how about yourself i am i am doing good i'm doing good so brendan tell me about your story how you really got to um starting a youtube channel and starting a coaching service on public speaking tell me where did that come from of course happy to share so when i was in university althea i used to do these things called case competitions think of it like professional sports but for nerds so while mm -hmm. other guys my age were playing sports like soccer or rugby or cricket or all that stuff, not really my thing. So what I did instead <laughs> is I applied that same competitive spirit, but to presentations. So for three years, I presented hundreds of times, coached dozens of people on their communication and public speaking skills. So by the time I graduated and I joined the corporate world, I just asked myself a simple question. How do I make a difference in the world? And that's when the idea for Master Talk came because I realized a lot of the content out there on YouTube is really bad. You hear advice like, oh, you should like be yourself, follow your dreams. And I was like, this is really bad. So I started making YouTube videos in my mother's basement. One thing led to another. And here we are today. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So, you know, a lot of times when we end up, end up on doing things like these and even on our own entrepreneurial journey, we would have gone through the thing ourselves. You know, we would have seen, you know, the challenges would have come on the stumbling and we would have even seen other persons going through it. So we have our own experiences. But tell me exactly what you mean by master your talk. Break it down for me, please. Yeah, for sure. So for me, mastering your talk is an analogy to tell us that everyone should be working on their communication skills. Because I've always been a big believer in this idea, Althea, that communication is the gateway to someone's heart. So many people think of communication like, oh, I got to present in front of a thousand people. I got to give this talk. No, no, no. Communication is every interaction you have with everyone around you. It's the way you talk to your family. It's the way you get dinner with your friends. It's the way you interact with your delivery man. And once you realize that, you'll realize that public speaking will not just improve your presentations, but it'll improve your life as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So I like that, you know, communication, connecting it to interaction, what that means and everything. So I really, really get that. But, you know, a lot of us struggle with, um, the, the, the public speaking, the speaking, you know, just engaging with persons, a lot of persons, a lot of us um, struggle with that. I can tell you. So when I started my journey and um, I produced the workbook, My Gold Tracker, then, you know, a lot of persons were interested in me speaking about it. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I, I don't want to do it. I, you know, I get these butterflies a lot of things happening for me so you know we fear we fear speaking and they actually said there i've seen where it says that public speaking is the number one fear do you have that same statistic or it's one of the biggest fears you know so what are, what are some of the challenges why is it that we fear speaking so much yeah absolutely i think the reason why we fear public speaking so much althea is because that's how we're raised you know, think about the education system. Every single presentation we have to give is a mandatory. We don't wake up one morning and say, hey, you want to get breakfast and present all day? Nobody says that. Yeah. 
And it's because of that, that we're always presenting to topics we don't get to choose, to students who don't want to listen to us, to teachers who unfortunately don't have time to coach us. So of course, we're going to see public speaking as a chore, like doing the dishes or mowing the lawn. Because for us, public speaking is not supposed to be fun. But yeah. by changing, by reframing that perspective to something more empowering, we're going to see it as a way to make a difference. And there's a question that I ask people to help you figure this out. And the question is, how would the world change if you were an exceptional communicator? Yeah, how would the world change if you were an exceptional communicator? I like that because a lot of times we don't think about um, that external impact that we can really make for others. You know, we're really all bottled up with ourselves to say that we don't want to do it, we're, we fear doing it and all of these things and we have such an extensive way to make an impact. So I totally get that. And I'm gonna go back to what you were saying about, you know, public speaking, how we were raised growing up, it's mandatory. And so we don't like anything with rules. A lot of us don't like the rules and, you know, the, the, the strict um, hand that is gonna ask us to do this, do that. And we don't have a choice. You mentioned the word choice. And you also mentioned that that was when we were growing up. You also mentioned that we were speaking to persons who probably didn't want to hear us. So we were speaking to the wrong audience. And, that's, sure. and that's also important, you know, when it comes on to speaking. And that's even when you think about your you um, us as business owners or even our audience who is listening to us about entrepreneurship. Getting the audience right is also important because if you're speaking to an audience who want to hear you, who want to hear about your, your business, you know, it, it will become a little easier because you feel at ease. How, how do you feel about that? I, I completely agree with you. And this idea that as you get better at communication, as you become more skillful, it's a lot easier for you to communicate your ideas to the world, especially if those ideas are the same. If you're a business owner and you have the same business, ideally it's not changing every every three minutes, but you're always communicating the same thing. So then over time, you get a lot better at communicating and sharing those ideas to people in the same way that you're a productivity expert and you're sharing the importance of having a planner, understanding how to manage your time. But since you communicate that idea so many times, you eventually become an expert. Right, practice. And, and I like where you're going with that, because I was, I was just about to ask, you know, what are some of the tips that people can use to help to build their confidence, you know, in, in, in speaking? What are some of those tips? Yeah, of course. So I would say for me, confidence stems from two areas, Althea. The first one is preparation, right? We know this. Yes. We prepare more, communicate the same idea. And a good example I was like to use is Tony Robbins, right? Tony's been doing the same seminars now for 40 years. 40 years, longer than you've been alive and definitely longer than I've been alive. He's been presenting the same thing over and over and over again until they're perfect. So preparation is key. But the second part of it, which is very important that not many people talk about is having a belief system. What do you yeah. actually stand for? Most people, unfortunately, don't stand for anything. So whenever they go up on a stage, they're presenting, the fear overtakes them because they don't understand why they're there on stage, what message they want to share. But for everyone who's mm -hmm. good at public speaking, like Brene Brown, who's an expert mm -hmm. in vulnerability, she hates public speaking. Like she's very public <laughs> about it. But the reason she shares it is because she understands why her message matters. Because there's a lot of people out there who need to hear this. So she needs to get better as a speaker. And then her mindset changes, and then you start to enjoy communication as a skill. Absolutely. I love that because, you know, as we build our confidence, repetition, and that's where the preparation comes in, because even, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share because our audience want to benefit from what we have, even thinking about coming on this platform to um, you coming to share with me and I being the host, both of us would have to prepare. Prepare. You know, both of us would have to be thinking about what message we want to share with our audience. So when you say when your message matters, then that um, it just er erodes some of the barriers that we have to public speaking because you want to go out and share this message with persons. So um, repeating preparation and making sure that it matters to you, you know, your belief system 
I, 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 I 100% endorse what you have shared because I know those are important ingredients to build in the confidence to um, go about public speaking. So if Brendan, if it is that when you say mastering your talk, when you're going with your coaching clients and you and doing your workshops, you know, outside of the preparation, outside of the, the belief system, is there anything else that you'd want to share with us to help our entrepreneurs or person or persons who are just um, trying to have they have public speaking as a goal? Is there anything that you can help them with to say this is how you master your talk? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially in the context of presentations that I would say, Althea is the way that you think about presentations for most people they don't really know how to practice them so i'm happy to share you this insight and if you apply this we'll easily 10 extra presentations yes. public speaking is like a jigsaw puzzle do you guys do jigsaw puzzles in jamaica you know those uh, yeah like, when i was a child when i was a child <laughs> there you go there you go so so this is going to be easy for you then let's say you're working on a puzzle yourself just for fun with maybe your family or somebody, which pieces do you start with first and why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd have to think about that. Norris, I'm happy to share the answer. So the answer is the edges, yeah. right? Because the edges are super easy because they're like, because you know, there's corners and mm -hmm. then you work your way into the middle. But in public speaking, we don't do that. What we do is we get to a presentation at school and we start with the middle. So we shove a bunch of content or presentation, we get to it. We ramble through the entire thing. We get to the last slide. And it sounds something like this. Uh, yeah, so thanks. <laughs> yes. Right? So the key is to fix this. We need to start training our presentations like a puzzle. Start with the edges first. Practice your introduction 50 times. Not three times. Not five times. Do it 50 times. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the conclusion. What's a great movie with a terrible ending? Last time I checked, terrible movie, 50 times the conclusion. And then in two hours of practice, you look at your presentation and go, wow, I'm really good at this thing. I've never done an introduction 50 times before. Then you'll have the confidence to tackle the middle. Awesome. So start with the outer layer and then you build your way in. That, that's, a, that's an awesome tip. You know, sometimes we really think that a lot of the things that we have to go, we have to try that they're very challenging or difficult when some of the times it's really some simple solutions that um, we can apply. So I, I take that and I know my audience will take it and run with it because it really helps you. And practicing, practicing 50 times, you know, more than, more than what you think it's going to be ready or, or something for you to wow your audience. So if I were to ask you, um, what is the one non-negotiable habit that you practice to keep you focused as you go through life and business, what would that be? I would say for me, the biggest thing is the quality of your life is solely determined by the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. Mm -hmm. So I encourage everyone, and that's from Tony Robbins, I encourage everyone to wake up every day and to ask yourself a hard question about life. What are you pretending not to know? If you had all the money in the world, how would you spend your time? And if you died tomorrow, what would your funeral speech say about you? These are the questions that allow you to find insights. And those are the insights that allow you to lead your life in the way you want to lead it. Awesome. Ask yourself some hard questions. You know, sometimes when um, we think about even how we prepare for our day and how we prepare for our week, sometimes these are the things, these are the quality things that make a difference in our life. You know, so I appreciate you sharing that because sometimes we don't even pause. I know everybody, persons have their different morning routines and their rituals, but putting in this question about asking yourself that hard question, I think will make a difference for persons if they try it. Uh, I know you are you are young. You you started. I didn't know in terms of how long ago did you start your business, your YouTube um, channel, and your coaching service. I've been coaching for five years, but I started YouTube two years ago. Okay, and how has that journey been for you? It's been a lot of fun. You know, I get I get to serve executive clients across the world and how to effectively deliver their message. But I think for me, what's been great is the YouTube channel. I get to impact people who can't afford me. And I think that's what really counts at the end of the day. 
Okay, awesome. If you had, if there was one thing that you had to learn about five years ago when you just started on your journey that you think would have made a big difference for you, um, what would that have been? That my insanity is my gift. A lot of us try to hide from our insanity. We try to be like everyone else. We try to do what everyone else wants us to do. And that will leave you nowhere. Mm -hmm. That will lead you nowhere. Whereas the key to success is to discover your uniqueness and embrace it. Because it is the fact, it is the weird things about you that make you incredible. It is the odd things about you that make you unique. And it's that uniqueness that you need to cultivate because there's only ever going to be one version of you. So I would encourage people to step into their insanity, to be more expressive about the weird things that they do. I mean, I karaoke in eight different languages. I still live in my mother's basement. I dance alone in my basement an hour a day and I don't own a car, but uh, I coach, but I coach C-suite executives. Yes. <laughs> How does that, and I'm 23, I'm 24. I don't even know my age. How does that make any sense? It does. That's, it makes, Brendan, it makes absolutely no sense. And absolutely that's the, no sense. And that's the point. Yeah, absolutely no sense. So what I get from you, um, your weird criteria, your weird competence, your weird characteristics, everything blended together, people should embrace it, right? People should embrace it because there can only be one you. And a lot of the times, you know, I will, because I coach persons who want to even figure out their life before we even reach to productivity they just want to understand about themselves what they do good and what they don't and i'm saying look at every single thing ask people things about you you know what it is that they see about you that they observe what it is that you know about yourself that you can put everything together and embrace it and something use something from all of that you know just to really embrace who you are and show the world who you are but Brendan it makes no absolutely no sense that you're 24 coaching c-suite executives um building your own brand and have uh, so many persons that you're influencing but you know that is that is a huge milestone for you at such a tender age and <laughs> I must say that you you more than likely is a motivation to many to thousands you know in your own community and no in my in my audience so i'm grateful for that so as we are really wrapping the show brendan i just want to hear from you if you have any further tips for persons who are venturing out into a brand new year and would want some tips from somebody an influencer like you who knows how to um derail challenges and to just push through what would you say to the audience yeah, I think my advice is 2020 has been a tough year for, for a lot of us on different levels. And, and, and I wouldn't say for me, you know, I'm lucky no one, none of my family got hit with COVID. I didn't lose my job. And I know a lot of people are suffering right now. But I think the one piece of advice is the, this idea that every goal you have, somebody else has already achieved it. Yes. So find someone who's exactly like you who has achieved what you want to achieve in life and use them mm -hmm. as leverage, use them as inspiration to pursue your goals. Sure, I could be young, Althea, but I think that's a good thing. It and the is. Reason, right? and the reason I think it's a good thing is there's people who are double my age, who, are, who have a lot more experience than I do, who are afraid to get on a camera, mm -hmm. who are afraid to share an idea. So if I could do it, why can't you? Yeah. And that's, that's where the whole confidence comes back in and, you know, mastering your mindset, you know, all of that. It, 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 it comes, you know, a lot of us were on different paths. We started differently. Um, sometimes our environment or situations, the persons who were around us, you know, influence who we are. And um, we carry that along with us. So a lot of us were really stifled because of, you know, external influences, you know, parental influences, friend and community and the wider world. So it's kind of difficult for some persons. But yes, one of the things you have to know who you are, find everything that you um, know about yourself embrace it embrace yourself totally you have been sharing that with us um looking at all the qualities that you have leveraging and learning from persons who were ahead of you 
And that's important. Brendan, you have shared so much with us today. And I want to say that I am very grateful for your knowledge. I'm, I'm very grateful for your courage. I'm very grateful for, you know, your wisdom. Oh, <laughs> and everything kind. that you have been doing up to this point in time. But tell us where, how can we find you on YouTube and all the goodies that you have there for us. Thank you so much. And likewise to you, Althea. I love, I love the way that you're inspiring your Jamaican community to, uh, to do incredible things. So thanks Thank for you. what it is that you do. And yeah, absolutely. To get in touch, super easy. All you got to do is go on YouTube and type master talk in one word and you'll find me right there. Okay, awesome, awesome. So thank you again, Brendan, for you know joining me on Focus and Fulfilled. I know my audience would have gotten some important information from you, some tips and some knowledge. So thank you again. And guys, go over to Brendan's YouTube page at Master Talk. And there he has videos on different topics and giving you different tips to help you on your public speaking and your entrepreneurial journey. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.